it is the summer of 2061, and at the Unitarian Universalist Church of the Texas Town, a special visitor has arrived to serve as a guest speaker. Welcome, everyone to our Unitarian Universalist Church of the Town. I am the Reverend Vicki Sims and I normally lead the services every Sunday, but on this occasion I will turn the pulpit over to the Reverend Sophia Benton, who was my mentor when I was attending Harvard Divinity School in Boston. Thank you, Vicki, for inviting me here. I've been a Unitarian Universalist minister for over 40 years and I have served at many different churches in various states as well as the UU headquarters in Boston. And now I am conducting a tour of churches across this country to spread a message I see as vital to the survival of the UUs as a religious movement. As a person of color, I know all too well how hard we had to struggle, and a few of us even had to die to gain the civil rights in the southern states during the 1960s that whites have always taken for granted. We fought for black equality, and then we fought for gay rights, and then fought for the rights of transgender people. And with each struggle, we were pushed back. Blacks denied gay rights because of religious bigotry. And then some blacks, gays, lesbians, so-called feminists, and others denied rights to trans people. And a few months ago I actually met a gay white man who said he was racist, seeing little in common with other gays who happen to be black. To me, it is grossly unethical for anyone to say they believe in equality for themselves, and then pull the ladder up after them to prevent others different from them from having what they got. And so many white people assumed after the 1960s that the civil rights struggles were over and so they turned away from liberal politics and voted in presidents, members of Congress, governors and others that were in character much like the white supremacists, male chauvinists, and theocratic Christian bigots that denied equal rights to others. And so by the 2020s, we were fighting again for those rights of marginalized people. And with most media outlets owned by giant corporations, right-wing bigots had the dominant voices and they felt comfortable blasting leftists and woke ideology. They didn't use racial slurs, at least not openly, but their attacking liberals was no better. The United States of America was founded by liberals. The whole point of the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution was to set this nation on a progressive course of freedom and equality for all, without exception. We had slavery, yes, but even back then there were those who wanted to abolish it and won that fight after the Civil War. In truth, it should not have taken a civil war and the deaths of millions of Americans due to killing each other on the battlefield to move us forward. It happened because we did not see our common humanity. We are whites, blacks, Hispanics, Asians. We are Christians, Muslims, Jews, Buddhists, Hindus, and atheists. We are urban and rural. We are men and women. We live in the North, the South, the East, and the West. We work a variety of occupations and have various levels of income. We are native-born and immigrants. We speak English, Spanish, and dozens of other languages. And above all else we may be. We are all human. A black, female, trans, lesbian, Swahili-speaking, homeless, Muslim immigrant from Kenya is every bit as human as a white, male, cisgender, straight, English-speaking, native-born, Christian billionaire. One deserves the exact same rights in our society as the other, period. So stop being scared of those who seem different from you. If they have not harmed you, don't try to harm them. And that means don't elect and support politicians who seek to harm them. Fight for all marginalized people just as you would for yourself. Until you do, you're part of the problem. But when you do, you will make a more peaceful and ethical society for all. And that concludes my sermon.